could you start a fire with it? I think you probably could if you held it there long enough. Right guys, new tool. New tool in the house, fresh from Amazon. We've got here a cordless heat gun. Now, is this actually gonna work? There's been mixed reviews on Amazon, which is where I bought it from. Basically, 315 degrees, it says 600 Fahrenheit, max temperature, lightweight, USB charging, lithium ion battery. I've seen a few pictures online where people have ripped this apart because it doesn't work properly for whatever reason. Um, hopefully this one won't need to be, but I have a feeling we might need to do some mod strip. Anyway, let's open it up and see what it's uh, all about. It's super handy to have battery powered everything these days, and there's not really any excuse not to be able to make something like this, which would normally use quite a bit of power. Um, be, be made cordless because the batteries are kind of technologies there now. So it says two amp hour lithium ion battery on the side of it there, and 3.6 volts, and 315 degrees. So this is gonna be perfect. My thoughts were this would be perfect for just doing quick heat shrink jobs, rather than using a lighter and all of that stuff. So there we go. So can we turn it on? Will it actually do anything out of the box? Like always, these things never seem to work straight away. You've got to plug them into some sort of USB power which I'm gonna do now. I've actually got like quite a high power USB hub here, which I bought from uh, from IKEA, which kicks out a few watts. So let's just plug that in. It's got a power power light on it. Don't think it'll run from USB. I think it might have some sort of safety fix. So let's actually read the instructions, shall we? No, the heat gun cannot be activated during the charging process. Um, okay, so you push safe start button for three seconds to activate blower motor press a button a second time to activate the heating elements. So hopefully we've woken it up a little bit. Maybe it's not completely charged, but push the button and see what happens. Okay. See that? It's actually showing full power there as well. So there is some air coming out of it. <laughs> and then what? You've got to press this, press the button a second time to activate the heating. Right, you hear the power drop there. Well, I mean, there, there is hot air coming out of that. There's no question there's hot air coming out of that and it's it's pretty damn hot right at the end. I let you can see that. That's gonna be enough to do heat shrink. Oh, that is, that is really hot. So press it again and it just goes back to some residual heat in there, but not a lot. Right, let's try doing some, um, what do you do? Just hold this button down to turn it off. So let's try some heat shrink then. All right, so I've got a bit of heat shrink here, sort of stuff I'd normally use. So we're gonna turn it on, hold the button down, fan starts, press the button again to get some heat, and then we'll just hold that close up to the heat shrink. And it does actually work. It is actually doing what it says it's supposed to do. So I'm happy with that. We'll see how long, the, see how long it actually lasts for on that battery, but um, on the built-in battery, but that is doing the job that I want it to do. What more do you want? It's not gonna be a crazy, like, remove, like, eye season stuff from a from a surface mount kind of board, but that is doing it, doing the job, albeit quite, you know, you have gotta be quite close to it. It works. What I will say, though, is it is already on one bar of power, so, yeah, we'll have to see what how long this actually lasts. Could you start a fire with it? I think you probably could if you held it there long enough. It's just gonna singe it, it's not gonna do it. Actually, we're losing power now, and it's shut off. So I don't think you're gonna get that much time out of it, but let's fully charge it and see what, what happens. There you go, it's charging again. In theory, it's gonna take about an hour to charge. If this is a two amp hour battery, and we're charging off of a two amp um, USB port, I mean, who knows what's going on inside, whether the battery's actually getting two amps, but. Let's just leave it plugged in and just see what happens, see how long it takes. I've plugged it into a power bank down here that's got a power meter on and it's showing five watts. So that's basically one amp, isn't it? So it's gonna take two hours to charge. What does it actually tell you in the instructions? Battery will take two hours to charge. See, what needs to happen is they need to start using power delivery, USB power delivery, 12 volts, 120 watt, 130 watts. Um, that would be a really good way to do this. Then you could plug like a high power USB-C power supply, like something you get with your phone, in it and actually use it from the power supply as well and then also charge faster that would be a really good way to sort of do something like this but this is literally the only rechargeable heat gun i've seen in this form factor 
Some of them I've seen are kind of look like drills and I wasn't really interested in that. I just wanted something super small and compact that you could potentially put like a, um, an 18650 in or um, a 21700, something with a load of power. So when it's fully charged, I will rip this thing apart and I'll see what's actually in there and see if you know we can make it better. We might be able to you know put a different cell in there and um, get a bit more runtime out of it. Right, so it's fully charged now and it took about two hours. I'm just gonna turn it on and just see if it's any better. Now it's sort of fully charged. It's probably about the same actually. You do have to be pretty close proximity to it, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because sometimes you want to do little heat shrink jobs and you don't want to actually, you know, have the whole area heated up. So this could be quite useful for that. Right, let's rip it apart. There's just one, two, three, four, five, six screws. This might be a problem, this bit here. This might, we might knack at that taking it off, but let's see. Right, all the screws are out. It looks like it is actually gonna come apart quite easily. Um, this kind of control button thing isn't what I thought it was. It's not just a, like a nasty sticker. It's actually pretty well done. This end though looks a bit, oh no, you can prise it open. There you go, so there, yeah, that is, this is basically it. So look, we're inside. Pretty impressive actually. It's quite nicely made. So you've got a little fan there with a little kind of um, brushed motor, a bit like what you'd see on like a, one of the sort of cheaper little drones or something like that. Um, that might fail eventually because it's obviously got brushed and they are known to, to fail after a little while, but maybe not in this instance. And this looks like a little kind of ducted fan type of thing. It's pretty, pretty nice little setup. And then the bit I'm interested in at the end is basically just like these, this sort of like little element. Um, which they've got, which I've not seen before. So this must be sort of like, you know, custom designed for this thing, for this heat gun. Um, but this is quite interesting because I've always quite fancied making like a, an 18650 fire starter um, that's solar, solar powered. So you could potentially have like a limitless way of starting fires if you needed to, um, which would be pretty cool. So I might see if I can grab one of these kind of elements and, and make something up. But if we actually have a look at the battery itself, the cell itself, it's it says on there 2000. Um, so it is a 2000, 18650, 2000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volts. Um, now, what I want to know, I want to know what it's doing to this cell because this cell does actually feel quite warm. So what I'm going to do is measure the voltage of this cell and then turn it on and see if it's kind of, you know, really pulling that battery voltage down. And that way we'll see whether, you know, that cell is actually any good or not. Because this is a really good way of testing cells, actually, just literally short circuiting, which is basically what that element is doing. So, all right, let's do that. Right, so I'm on DC voltage. I'll just put one probe in there. And then I think it will be that one there. So with 3.8, so that might have fallen down after charging, but these cells should be 4.2 when they're fully charged. Okay, right. I might need to move that out of the way if I'm going to turn this on because it's probably going to melt the multimeter. So let's turn the fan on. It's a lot noisier with the case open. And then we'll hit that down. So let's just check the voltage now. It's down to 3.5. No, I'm not horrendous, but look how quick it's going down. Look. It's actually dropping pretty, pretty consistently. So it is going to, it is going to run that battery down. Just to check that. It's actually not that heat doesn't even extend out to that far. It's very localized. It's right at the end. Let's just check that. So we do, we're continuously dropping down. But. I mean, you know, if this cell was a really powerful cell, it would probably be holding like 3.8. You know, that's probably what you'd expect. But this is probably quite a high current application. We'll see how long it runs for anyway. I'll put the casing on now because obviously it won't get the correct airflow um, without the casing on because the, um, the little temperature sensor there, I think, will probably just is probably just going to limit how hot that is actually getting. But you can see, you know, we're seven minutes in now and it's only dropped one battery bar. So I think some of these reviews on Amazon have been a little bit harsh. I'd be happy with five minutes. It's not a problem. Right, it just turned off. So it made about eight minutes, nearly nine. 
not too bad. How warm is the battery? So the battery itself is about 40 degrees, which kind of looks fine as well. Now, I'd be interested to know where they've got their voltage cutoff set for that, this cell. Three point two. So you can hear it drop now as it gets towards the end of the charge of the battery. Do they cut for three volts or do they carry on going to two point five? Yeah, I think it's going to be two point five, two point eight maybe. No, yeah, two point eight. So that's pretty sensible. Yeah, so two point eight volts for a lithium-ion battery is not, you know, unusual. That's kind of probably what most e-bike batteries will probably cut out per cell. So yeah, everything's looking pretty good there. So is this worth it? It was basically thirty quid. So you know, you're going to have to spend a lot more um, to get something that will work a lot better. Now, I haven't tested them yet, but the big manufacturers are doing these now using drill batteries, which is a lot better because you've got a much higher voltage and you can probably easily kick out, you know, 500, 600 watts, um, which is probably what you need to have um, really for like a, you know, a heat gun that is going to be usable. This is okay for kind of light jobs, I would say. Um, it is a little bit underpowered, I'm not going to lie, but we might be able to make it a little bit more powerful. Maybe it could run on five volts, but you know, these little TS100 soldering irons, you know, do an absolutely fantastic job and you just literally plug a LiPo battery in the end of that. Now that's the other thing. Are lithium ion batteries really good for this sort of thing? Yes, they are if you've got a cell that is actually you know capable of kind of holding a decent voltage whilst delivering that sort of current draw i suspect that this battery in here is, pre is pretty cheap it's probably a good balance between cost and performance it doesn't look like it's handling it bad it'll probably do you know quite quite a few cycles at that kind of level but um really you you want to be using like a samsung 25r or maybe like a Samsung 30Q or, or some of these 21700 cells that are capable of like 42 amps, like the Molly cell P42A, um, you know, they are crazy cells. You know, these can handle like 42 amps continuous, you know, without heating up drastically. Obviously they're gonna heat up a bit, but not to the point where it's gonna, you know, be dangerous and melt the cell and render it useless later on. Now you could use a LiPo cell in this application. They can handle a much higher discharge current, um, but then, you know, you get into issues with like reliability, you know, LiPo cells are not the most reliable things in the world. They do take a lot of babying. So this is why they've probably gone for a lithium iron cell because they're just a lot more resilient um, to being abused. Now, ultimately this thing isn't too bad. If I was gonna redesign it, I'd probably pitch it more towards the hobby market and maybe not even include, include a battery inside it, just actually have like a, an input voltage so you could plug, you know, any LiPo that you've got lying around just bang straight in the back of there and you could actually run it off of off of that but it, this product is really kind of designed as a bit of a consumer product so that's probably not really what they've thought about doing on here you could put two 18650s in here the cost is then going to go up obviously that would give you more power because you'd have more voltage um you know i think voltage is the key here it just needs to be a bit higher um keep the current the same add a bit more voltage and I think you'd get, you know, you definitely get enough watts here to actually sort of, you know, really start cooking stuff and starting fires. Anyway, I might do some mods to it. I've got some crazy new 21700s on the way, um, which might be ideal for this. I don't know if I'll be able to fit it in there as well, but we'll see. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Catch you next time.